Maria Taher, I'm 33 years old and I underwent katna, also known as female genital cutting, when I was seven years old. Now I am a social activist um, trying to work to stop the practice of female genital cutting from continuing. My family used to go to India every other year growing up and I know I was in Mumbai. I remember being taken to an old looking building and then I remember being put on the ground. My dress was pulled up, something sharp cut me. It is a very difficult statistic to track because of the secret nature of female genital cutting, but there is so much more awareness that is happening. I had been talking about this issue for many years and my name was out there in print, but I realized coming on camera would be a very different experience, not because of concerns for myself, but more so for my family. And I was worried about any potential backlash that they might face from the community that, that they belong to. And I felt, though, it was important to let people know that it does happen here in the United States and that it's something that I am against and it shouldn't occur. So within this last year, there has just been a lot that has been happening with female genital cutting at the global level and then at the federal level. It's definitely scary to come out with my face on camera because I don't want to be judged for having undergone female genital cutting or viewed as a victim. I helped start an organization called SEO and its task is to help empower communities to fight against female genital cutting through education, collaboration, and community engagement. So he talked about um, his sister and her writing, but also what made him want to get involved and, you know, the importance of men in the movement and his was really great. Um, and the importance of having a state law I mean, is that when something happens in the state and there's a crime that happens here, um, the state has the better ability to deal with it, to prosecute its residents, to deal with the health, safety, and welfare of its residents. For me, there's something inherently wrong with the idea of that if this is so significant, why does it have to be done in secret? I think that's the first step to social change is bringing it out into the public. And that's what, um, as an activist, I've really tried to do. We really recognize that dialogue needs to begin within the communities when we're going to address any type of social norm change. And storytelling is this powerful tool that you can use to start that dialogue, start that conversation just amongst a few people at a time, and then have that grow into larger numbers as well. All of those activities are things that help break that silence, that barrier, because you're really acknowledging that this exists and this is something that we need to address and we need to change. When I find out that it's still happening now, it's, it brings up a lot of different emotions. So obviously I wish I hadn't undergone it, but I think that because I did undergo it, I have this passion for gender violence issues that I'm able to be in a place where I can talk about it, where I can do research on it, where I have an insider's perspective and I can be an activist in that way too. Is this is something that is viewed as child abuse and it's something that is happening to a girl that doesn't have the capacity yet to consent to it or knows what's happening. 